This is a testimony from Dana Hall about what she experienced when she came to the encounter in Houston. Let's watch this together. So my name is Dana Hall. I'm, I live in LA and so it was a little bit rough getting here because I, since I came to the Lord, I've been going through some financial problems and uh, you know, I just prayed and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, can you provide a way for me to get here? And so he made a way for me through one of my friends and she got my ticket and the Lord did the rest. So that's how I ended up getting here. Wow. How has the encounter retreat impacted uh, you in these last couple of days? So for me, the um, encounter uh, retreat has impacted me in a very awesome way because you know, before I came, I said, Jesus, I want to I want to encounter you even more. I want you to take me to that level that I've never been before, you know? And I just asked him, like, you know, let me have some more experiences with you because I've been having some experiences with him. And when I came here, I just felt the love of, you know, the younger folks around me because I've never had that before. You know, only one of my friends I've had, like, you know, we're the only ones who have been in a platform with older folks who are spirit filled, but now it was good to walk in to an encounter with young people who love Jesus and who are serving Jesus or on fire for Jesus. It's something that's been like, you know, mind blowing for me. Okay, so one of the things that um, I've noticed and I really want to talk about here is Dana is new to the Lord. And I spoke to her actually today before recording this video to kind of get a little more in depth of her testimony. And she's, she's really not been walking with the Lord for a very long time. And I love to see the hunger that she has for God. I'm telling you the hunger truly is a gift from the Lord. But one of the things that she says that I kind of want to talk about a little bit because it's a very controversial topic in the Pentecostal spirit-filled church today. She says that she wanted to come because she wanted to experience more of God. Now, you may be thinking, well, what's so controversial about that? Well, there's a lot of people out there that would say that you shouldn't be looking out for experiences. You should just be looking out for the word. Well, I would beg to differ. I, I, I would say that that is incorrect because if you're saying that we should just look for the word and we should just look for the Bible, well, the Bible is a book full of experiences. And I really believe that if you are reading this book that is full of so many spiritual, Holy Spirit led experiences yet you are not having any of those experiences, there is something that needs to be adjusted in your relationship with God. And I think that we usually get scared of experiences because we're scared of the unknown. But one of the things that we have to understand is that if we want to grow into our relationship with God, we have to give room for experiences. Now, this is where we draw the borders. Where is it that experiences can be too much? Experiences can be too much when we don't know how to compare our experiences to the word of God. So when people say you shouldn't be looking out for experiences, I wouldn't necessarily say that because, I mean, come on, let's be honest. Many of those same people who are saying you shouldn't be looking for experiences, was it a reading of the scripture that got you saved? Absolutely not. Every single one of us who love the Lord today came to him because we had some sort of experience. Maybe it wasn't a huge encounter. Maybe you even read a, a passage from the Bible and that word convicted you. That passage that you read, that you read specifically caused a stirring inside of you. Well, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That is a spiritual experience. And so just reading just scripture alone without the Holy Spirit is, is completely in vain. And so when we say 
that we shouldn't be looking for an experience. What we really should be saying is that every time we have an experience, there's two things we want to look for. Number one, does my experience confirm the word of God? Can I find the experience that I'm having in the word of God? And number two, is this experience drawing me closer to Jesus or is it drawing it, drawing me closer to myself? Is this experience boosting my ego or is it leading me to humility to bow before the Lord? Because you can have spiritual experiences. You can even have visitations of heaven. And instead of it drawing closer to the Lord, it can actually draw to your own ability or your own ego because of your ability to be able to see in the spirit. And so every experience that we have should be tested by this. Is it confirmed by the Lord? Does it come from the Lord? And is it drawing me closer to him? Let's continue to see what Dana shares and what she truly experienced. Listen to this because... Dana talks about something that happened to her during one of the messages. Listen to this. So I would say to someone who um, needs to come, who wants to come to the encounter, do not hesitate, hesitate to come. Because, you know, to come and experience Jesus for yourself, it's amazing. Because during the encounter, I remember Freddie saying that, you know, there's going to be, the wind is going to blow. And I felt literally the wind coming through. And even when they were giving prophecies, I also felt the presence of the Lord just subtly. I just could feel him like, you know, confirming that, you know, as the word says, it's one spirit. And I could feel like the connection and everything. And, you know, just to see people just, I, I was a mess. Like, my makeup was just running and I didn't even care because Jesus was in this room. Jesus was here. And that's, that's what really matters to me. Just being in the presence of the Lord and not thinking about anything else or anyone else around, just me and him. So if anyone wants to come and experience Jesus, it's worth it. Did you catch that? You know, something that I really love about, about this testimony and about Dana particularly is that she's been walking with the Lord since March of 2021 and already she's able to discern God in the wind. And I spoke to her previously before this recording because I had to figure out like what was she referring to? Did she feel the wind outside or no, but she she told me that she felt physically a physical wind come into her. And, and embrace her um, while the service was going on, while we had one of the sessions inside of a building. It was not the air conditioning. It wasn't anything like that. It was it was physical wind that she began to feel at the moment when I started saying, um, when I started speaking about the wind of God, which is completely powerful. Now, the reason why this is really amazing that she's able to discern this is because many people don't know how to discern God. Many people are very limited in how they discern God. The, uh, the Bible says in the book of Job chapter 33 that God speaks over again and again, although men do not realize it. Why is it that for us humans, it's so difficult to actually discern God or to notice when God is speaking to us? Well, it's very simple because God is a spirit. God is not a man. The Bible says he's not a man that he shall lie. He does not, even though he can communicate to us through our humanly beings, through talking, through speaking, through thoughts, there are other ways that God communicates because he is a spiritual being. I'll give you an example. Psalms chapter 81. David talks about I believe this vision that he began to see where it says that God came and he rode on a mighty angel. Now, the original translation of that says a cherub. And he began to approach David covered in dark rain. 
Now, the reason why that's really interesting is because with today's Christian, if God were a, if God were to touch you, if God were to come to you, you would only recognize him as if he came in the form of flesh. You would only recognize him if he came in a dove because that's what we're used to. But God's not limited to a dove or to a lion or to a lamb. In Psalms 81, he came in the midst of, of rain. He came in a dark cloud. Yet David was able to recognize and discern that is that is God. That's my father. That's the God that I serve. Why? Because of the intimacy that David had built. <laughs> Because of the intimacy that David had built with God. See, it's almost kind of like this. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice. When you know God, you know his sense. When you know God, you know when he is in the room. It's like it's like if if my mom or my or any of my parents, my dad or my mom were to come in. I live in a different city than my parents do. But let's say they were to, they we were to they were to come and surprise me. If they were to walk outside my door and they were to start to speak, I know their voices. So I would be able to identify them immediately. I could see I could bump into a, a good friend of mine in the store or at a mall. It doesn't matter what clothes they're wearing. It doesn't matter what if they're wearing a hat of the wearing glasses, they have a distinctive, distinctive sound that I can recognize and say, that's my friend. And so David, in the midst of the rain, was able to distinct, wait a minute, I know him. I know that person. Why? Because of intimacy and prayer. And so Dana, I love that. Honestly, you really are very prophetic <laughs> in, in your early stages in your walk with God because I feel like other people other people God can move into the lives through a dream God can come in through a wind God can come in through a through a moment of warm or just feeling warmness in their body and they would not be able to identify that is actually God trying to encounter them so that is absolutely powerful 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 well we're gonna finish this video with her uh last reaction and uh and then i'll see you next week for the very next testimony which i know is going to be completely powerful i love you god bless you and i'll see you next wednesday you know it's a beautiful thing if you're young and you're serving the lord because you don't see a lot of young people serving the Lord nowadays. And if you see someone young serving the Lord, it's awesome because the Lord calls upon you when we are young and strong. And so it's just the best way. He's, he will, he's, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. And I want to share that with many, many other people out there.